Welcome. Uh, nice to see you all. If you want to comment below, um, I can say hello to some of you individually um, until I start moving on the mat and then I'm too far away to see the tiny letters. This is about the only time I really can see them. Hopefully the feed won't be too jumpy or laggy. I know that a lot of us are experiencing that right now because of the internet overload that the world is using. Hi, Aurelia. Nice to see you. Um, especially in my house, you know, I have my daughters and my husband who are both working on their devices. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot that our system is taking, but you know, if something does happen and this video ends up going blah, 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 I don't understand what she's saying, it's too laggy, then, you know, just go to the back button and watch any of the beautiful um, classes that are already provided on the brief page, okay? So you can still get some time for yourself today. Hi, Tammy. Yeah, so this is a morning flow, vinyasa level one or two, which means that we're going to add a few options to do more challenging pose here or there. Usually when I do a vinyasa one, two, I have one pose I'm trying to get us to by the end of the class. Um, I always have something in mind. And so the poses we do before that are helping us open up our body in a safe way so we can get into our deepest version of this pose today. Um, hi, Colleen. Good morning. Yeah, so um, the theme today is pranayama. For the first two weeks, we went through the yamas and niyamas. Those are the first two limbs of yoga and the yoga sutras. And then we had asana, which we all know very well. We're about to do lots of asana in a second. And pranayama is the fourth limb. And then after that, it's deeper states of meditation, basically, until you reach absorption. And so these are all tools, the yamas, the niyamas, the movement, the breath, that help us sit in meditation. And so if you're like me, you need to move a lot to get your mind to stop talking, right? My mind never stops talking. And when I do a yoga class that moves me in a pace and in poses that are challenging, I can't think anymore. It lets go of that. It gives me time to just be. And I really enjoy being. <laughs> not worrying about the future or the past. And so we're going to see our breath is. You know, I don't know anybody who has had coronavirus yet, um, but I won't be surprised if by the end of this, I know someone who has. You know, I have a grandmother with um, COPD. And so, you know, I'm just hoping that she stays safe and in isolation. And I'm sure we all have somebody in our life who already has lung problems and they don't need more. So... While we're breathing today, let's just be thankful for our lungs and how they give us ease with each breath, okay? So we're gonna start a little bit different this time by laying on our bellies. You know, we're used to sitting or laying on our backs, but for this one, let's lay on our bellies and have our elbows apart, our palms together as we rest one cheek or forehead down on our palms. And readjust however you need, moving the rib cage around a little bit, tucking any body parts, just to feel yourself nice and deep and grounded in your mat. And if you notice your neck doesn't feel good, however you place it, you can move it around. You can move your hands around. They don't have to stay where they are. I want you to be comfortable. And then come into your breath. Closing your eyes. Noticing if you're holding any tension in your shoulders, your jaw, your upper back, and just letting it release however you can. Same thing with the fronts of the thighs and the glutes, the toes. Make any micro adjustment you need to really settle in. And then notice your breath. Feel the inhale as it expands the belly and pushes down and maybe widens a little bit along the edges of your mat. When you're in this position, you can usually hear your breath a little bit more. So pay attention to the sound of your breath. If 
It's your own internal song. Soothing you to sleep. Calming your anxieties. It's always with you. And now notice where your breath is. Is it in your chest or your belly? Or are you breathing deeply within all? And see if you can move it around. If you're not breathing into your belly, soften the belly, softening the ab muscles so you can take a full inhale. If you've had children, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and if your neck is starting to hurt, move the position of your neck. We'll be here about 10 more breaths. Taking a little longer to exhale than the inhale. And if your hands aren't underneath your head and your elbows aren't wide, bring them there. Now placing your forehead down the ground. Let's place the left hand over the right. I'll face a little bit of an angle so you can see what I'm doing here. And then inhale, send the left arm up with your head, keeping the right forearm and elbow down on the ground. Exhale down. Inhale, lift. Exhale lower. If you're feeling any impingement in the low back, don't go quite as high as you inhale. Exhale. Maybe you add on the right leg with the left arm. Inhale. Reaching the toes far, far behind you. Exhale. Let's do two more of those. Last one. Exhale. Switching sides, right hand stacks on top of left. Inhale, forehead, forearm lift. Exhale, lower. Now at any point, feel free to add the left leg. I like to do half and half, just so I can feel out how my back channel feels. If there's any space in the front body to move a little deeper. And whenever you're ready, maybe both move. Right arm, left leg. Moving with the pace of your breath. We all have a different rate of breathing. And after you do your last one, lay back down, bring your arms down to your sides, bend your knees and shift your legs left to right. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're gonna do a little thing I call, don't smush the strawberry. It might be a blueberry, <laughs> who knows? So we're gonna imagine that right underneath your belly button when you're laying on the mat, that there is a fruit right underneath the belly button. So imagine there's a blueberry or a strawberry, or if you're really aggressive, maybe a peach. <laughs> we're gonna reach our arms towards the front of the mat, fingertips or palms down the ground. Bring your forehead down to the ground, and then, Engage the ab muscles so you can lift the belly button up to the spine and there's now room for that strawberry or fruit to grow. You're not going to smush it. We're not making jam yet. Keep holding there. You might need to bring your arms out into a little wider of a V if it hurts your shoulders at all. A little tuck of the tailbone. Strong legs for three, two, one. Exhale, release the belly, squish your fruit. Okay, we're getting the core a little up, nice and warm. So if that didn't feel okay in your arms, feel free to do goalpost arms instead. Forehead or chin down to the ground. I like the forehead because I can lift my belly button a little bit more. And then when you're ready, engage, pushing the hip bones down, lower ribs down, and finding space right in the abdominal cavity. Maybe notice on the exhale, when there's less air in the body, you're able to find a little more space, a little more curvedness. One more breath. 
Exhale, squish your berry. Child's pose. Bringing your knees wide, belly goes in between the thighs, seat bones as close to the heels as possible. And then rising up into tabletop position. I'm usually facing the other way. This is the front of my mat, so I'm gonna switch. I don't always want my feet, my head, or my feet go. <laughs> All right, tabletop position. Inhale, drop the belly, gazing forward. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exhale as you draw the tailbone, tucking it, chin to chest, rounding the spine. Push a little bit more for one more breath. Mm -hmm. And then inhale as you come back into your cow. Exhale, cat. And so you can keep moving like this, or since it's really early morning, I like to just move however you need. Big hip circles. Maybe in a child's pose. Maybe you do a little cat cow where you're shifting forwards and backwards. Barrel rolling the chest. There are so many variations you can do on hands and knees. I'm just feeling out where do you need to breathe. So notice where you're feeling sticky. Push and find expansion in that body part somehow. And then take a deep inhale and hold it there. Exhale through the mouth. And you'll find a new spot and you hold it for an inhale. And then you exhale it out. Let's do one more. Okay. Walking. Left knee in slightly to center, kicking the right leg out long for sunbird. Maybe you stay here with just the right leg, the inner thigh spiraling down, or maybe you lift that left arm up to join the right leg. Now we're going to do a little bit of movement, drawing the elbow to the knee. And notice on your first one, what happens to that low back? Is it hunching a lot? That's fine. Just take a notice, see how you move naturally. And then for the next one, try not to do as much of the dome in that back. Try to keep a straight spine and draw the elbow to the knee. And you might notice you feel this a little bit more in the glute, yeah? And you can do either one. Do you want to have a little bit more work in the core or a little bit more work in the glutes? Last one. Exhale, left hand down, right hand down. Pivot the right leg out as you come into a half, half moon pose. So the right leg isn't straight behind me. It's just a little bit at an angle, 45 degrees or so. Left arm reaches up, left leg comes up. A half, half moon, we'll call it a quarter moon, why not? Come into quarter moon, down on one knee. And then if you'd like to go for a bind, a little back bend here, bend the left leg, reach your hand for the foot, and then kick the foot into your hand as you reach the rib cage up to the ceiling. Uh-oh, I don't know what that was. <laughs> mm -hmm. The more you lift the chest and kick your foot into the hand, the deeper you'll fill us. One more breath. Beautiful, exhale, release the left leg back down to the ground, left arm reaches up overhead for a supported side plank. And then exhale, left hand comes down to the ground, downward facing dog. Cycling your dog out here. Mm -hmm. and don't worry about how straight your legs get or how close your heels can get to the ground. What we want more than anything is to find equal pressure in our feet and hands as we lift the hips up and away. So you'll notice the more that you can lift the hips, the straighter your spine gets. And maybe over time your legs straighten, maybe they don't. Especially if you're a cyclist, you might have a little bit more tension in those leg muscles. And it might not happen as easily as somebody who was a dancer or a gymnast. You know, we all have our own interests and we work with that. Exhale, child's pose, bringing your hands down, arms to your sides. If you want to do a few wrist circles here, 
in reverse direction. All right, coming to the other side, sunbird. Right knee walks into the center as the left leg extends out. Notice if you're spiraling the hip, this isn't the half moon version. Right now you wanna have square hips. Really send that left hip bone so it's pointing down. And then right arm extends up if you like. Remembering there's always options. You do not have to go there if you don't want. And we'll do five contractions. You do exhale, draw the elbow to the knee. I like to round the spine for the first one or two. And then I work with a straight spine for the other. So I can get a little mixture of the movement. Steady gaze, steady breath. Can you feel that a little bit more in your glute if you're not doing as much as a little dome in the spine? Or is it just me? <laughs> All right, coming into half moon pose. The left leg comes down, spiral the foot out. And then rotate into that supported side plank for a moment. Right hand comes up. Maybe you walk your left hand out a little bit diagonal if you want to go for that back bend and you felt a little unstable. And then when you're ready, come into your quarter moon. Mm-hmm. And so you can stay here working on stacking the right hip over the left, getting a little lighter in the left hand or bend and reach for your foot, either the inside or outside edge. I'm not going to be super picky here. Kicking the foot into your hand and then doing a back bend as you reach the rib cage up to the sky for three, two, and one. Exhale back into your quarter moon. Dropping the right foot down as the right arm reaches up overhead, finding extension from your heel through your fingertips. See if you can get the whole right foot down on the ground, the whole sole of the foot. One more breath. Exhale. Right hand comes down. High plank pose. Holding here. Pushing your hands into the ground directly over your shoulders. And let's do a little flossing here as we take our toes or heels forward resting on our toes and then back again. Yeah, heels move back and forward. Chest is moving in the same way. You might even roll so far forward you go over your toes. Mm -hmm. Last one. And then coming into your normal plank as you come knees down, chest down, chin down, booty stays lifted for a moment. Everything comes down, inhale lift, Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Exhale, tucking the toes, drawing your seat to your heels, and then lifting the hips, downward facing dog. We'll take three lion's breaths here. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth, tongue out, eyes wide toward the third eye. Inhale. Let your eyes do some movement. Two more. Are you roaring? If I'm being filmed doing this, so you can do it at home, right? <laughs> Inhale. Exhale, bend your knees, walking yourself to the front of your mat. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift. Exhale, softening the knees as you forward fold. Inhale, halfway, straight spine. Exhale. One more time. Inhale, come up halfway, lifting your shoulder heads a little bit higher. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana, grabbing your elbows, maybe shaking your head yes or no here a few times. If you'd like to ragdoll, go ahead and do that as well. Notice your breath. Root your feet. Inhale, coming up halfway, bringing your hands to your hips. Exhale. And then inhale, standing up with a straight spine. Exhale, release. Mountain pose. Tadasana. Close your eyes here. Feel all four corners of your feet. Rooting down in the mat beneath you. 
Notice if you're swaying left to right or forward and backward. Let's bring awareness to those shoulder heads. So maybe you're like me and you naturally curve in. I've been like that ever since I can remember. So my work is to spread them, to find more space between each shoulder blade. And so you're gonna start to engage these upper back muscles to hold that movement. Keep your feet rooted, tuck your tailbone slightly. And remember that strawberry or that berry? Try not to squish it here. So we're standing in a really strong Tadasana. Fill your breath, move up and down the length of the spine. Maybe you're in a certain color light and exhale another color. Right now I'm visualizing a white light being inhaled and a red light is being exhaled. And those are just the colors that I can feel right now. Maybe you have the same, maybe you have different. Let the breath naturally move through you, no forcing. Keep a strong body. Who knew Tadasana could be so much work? And then inhaling that light, sweeping your arms up. Exhale as you soften the knees. Swan dive down, forward fold. Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift. Exhale, bringing both hands down and feet coming into your high plank pose. And we're going to start building a little bit of heat here as you bring your left forearm down to the ground and then your right. Left hand comes back up, right hand comes down. Switching sides, right elbow, left elbow, right palm, left palm, and switch again to the left. Back into forearm plank and high plank. So we're working a little bit of our shoulder strength here. Definitely our core strength. At any point when you're over it, feel free to come down into your child's pose. Otherwise, let's do one more round on each side. Whew. Last one. Awesome. Knees go wide. Child's pose. I'm going to bring my hands behind me, interlacing my fingers into a fist. Forehead down to the ground. Lifting the shoulder heads off the ground, squeezing the blades together. And then exhale if you'd like, bringing the top of your head instead of your forehead, now the top of the skull as you lift the hips up high. And maybe the hands move away from the body. And you can keep rolling a little bit more onto your head as long as you don't have any neck injuries. If you've had neck pain, stay down a little bit lower. Don't lift your hips as high. But this is a nice transition into feeling headstand as you roll into the top of your head and lift the hips. And the more you lift the hips, the more you'll feel weight in your neck. So only go as far as feels safe for you. Neck injuries are not worth any yoga pose, right? Not at all. One more breath. Exhale, lowering the hips, walking your hands towards the front of your mat. Tucking the toes, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg reaches up, keeping your hips square. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, kick it back out. Exhale to the right wrist. You know, a little lower than usual. Inhale, kick your leg up high. Exhale to the left wrist. Inhale one more time. Exhale, bring the foot through, let it land. Back heel stays over the toes, coming up onto your fingertips. So once you feel strong in the feet and the core, inhale, rise, crescent lunge. Exhale, goal post arms, reaching your arms out wide. <laughs> and then inhale, straightening the front legs, straightening the front arms, the top arms, sorry. What other arms do we have? Exhale, bending both knees. Inhale, lengthening. Exhale. Inhale. If you want to add on a little bit more to this, add a little back bend in the upper back. Whoa. 
Then a little wiggly. Steady the gaze, steady the breath. Let's do one more. Yes, there you go. Inhale. Exhale, bringing your hands to heart center, rooting your right foot, floating your way into warrior three. So don't worry about rushing into warrior three. See how you can transition as slow as possible. The more that you start to root weight into the right foot, the left foot becomes a little lighter. And then your pendulum, where your head and torso act as a weight to lift the left leg up high. Rounding in, see if you can spread them apart. For three, two, one. Yogi's choice, how to get back into your downward facing dog. Maybe you bring your hands down to the ground and lift the left leg up high for a little float time, maybe a handstand, or maybe you simply walk yourself back into plank pose. You can do a vinyasa here or go straight to downward facing dog. A vinyasa is going from plank to chaturanga on the in exhale. Inhale to up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. So you always have options to move at a higher cardio rate or less. Inhale, left leg reaches up. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, lift. Exhale, left wrist. Can it touch? Just a little kiss. Inhale. Exhale to the right. Little twist. Inhale, left leg reaches up. Exhale, bring the foot through as much as you can in between your hands. Strong feet onto your fingertips. Inhale, rise. Exhale, goal post arms. And seeing if you can feel this in the rotator cuff region. So you might feel it spreading the collarbones, but also notice what's happening in the shoulders. Inhale, lengthening the front leg and both arms reach up. Exhale, maybe both knees bend, back knee might touch, might not. Inhale, lengthen and straighten. Exhale, three more. Maybe you add a back bend into it. Last one. Inhale as you lengthen and straighten. Hands come to heart center. See yourself in warrior three. Slowly send your torso down halfway, rooting the left foot until the right leg lifts, lifts. It's like a little seesaw. How can we balance out the upper body and the lower body? Standing in a flamingo leg. <laughs> One more breath. Exhale, slowly bringing that right foot down to meet the left. Inhale, releasing your hands to your shins, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Bring your feet so they are hip distance apart. And then taking your hands, bringing them right underneath the feet, trying to get your toes into your wrist creases if you can. And then whenever you're ready, letting your head and neck soften here. So if you're super flexible in your body, your hamstrings, your calves feel really open today, consider bringing your elbows further apart as your feet push down into your hands. If this already feels like a little bit too much, you can always release your hands at any time and walk them up to whatever height you need. Okay. Let's take a few more breaths here, checking back in with our prana, our life force. Does the breath feel different when you're upside down like this? And then releasing your hands, slowly rolling up one vertebrae at a time, a little shoulder roll. Wrist circles, shake, shake, shake. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of nolly breath work. If you've already eaten breakfast, don't worry about it. Pretend that you're doing it, but don't go balls to the wall. I don't know why we say that statement. You're like, I don't. Well, you know, I'm all for female empowerment. So let me know in the comments, what's the female version of that? <laughs> I don't know. All right, so nolly breath. 
Okay, so what we can do is we can bring our hands down to our knees. You can either bring the fingertips so they're on the inner thighs or on the outer thighs, whatever feels like you have more support. And so for the Nali breath, what we're doing is we're taking a deep inhale, softening the belly, the abdominal cavity, and then we exhale twice two exhales to make sure you're definitely exhaling, okay? So we'll practice that, that first. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. And again, hold. Beautiful, soften the belly, take it, inhale. Okay, exhale through the mouth. Exhale again. Now maybe this time you feel that strawberry, suck it in. Engage the low abs. We're taking that belly, drawing it underneath the rib cage. Soften the belly, inhale. Double exhale. Engage the core, draw up the belly under the rib cage. And then maybe at the same time, you push your core, those little oblique muscles out. That's the crazy version, okay? Soften the belly, inhale, we're gonna do three more. Soften the belly, inhale. If you want to add on a little bit more, you just move the hips a little left to right, okay? Exhale, exhale. My throat lock. I can barely breathe. Inhale. <sighs> Standing up. Another shoulder roll. Wrist circles. Come back to the top of your mat. Close your eyes to pause and feel. What did that do for you energetically? Can you feel the blood coursing through your body a little bit more? Maybe you feel a little more lightheaded, a little lighter physically, less rooted. Just notice whatever sensations came up for you and let it sit, let it settle. Beautiful. Inhale. Sitting down, Utkatasana chair pose from Nali breath to chair. That should be a crime. <laughs> Inhale. Exhale, bring your hands together, heart center, twisting over to your right, left elbow over the right outer thigh. Maybe you stay here, or maybe you widen the arms out wide as though you're flying. If it feels okay in the neck, gaze as far up to your right hand as you can. I'm looking about halfway. My neck is not feeling that. Mm -hmm. Maybe staying here. If your left fingertips on the ground, awesome. If they're not, this is going to be a little bit harder. Try to lift that left leg off the ground so you're squeezing a hamstring curl, rooting your right foot. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How crazy. Flamingo pose. I'll show it to you from the side. You see what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Little action like that. Maybe you stay here. Or maybe you take that right hand, reaching it for the pinky edge side of that left foot. The left hand comes out to the side, baby grasshopper. <laughs> Do you feel like a grasshopper? Yeah, rooting your right foot. See how light you can get in the left hand. One more breath. And then exhale, finding your way down. We're all coming down to a seat if you're not already there. If you're in chair pose, sit all the way down. Yes, and we're gonna take our left foot, keep it bent in the knee. Right leg comes right on top. If this feels too deep, especially if you don't have both sit bones on the ground, I recommend keeping that left leg out long and crossing the right leg over. That way you can root the right hip down to the ground, okay? Inhale, sending your right arm up. Feel length from the sit bone out through the outer armpit. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong side. The right arm down, the left arm reaches up. Exhale, twist. So instead of forcing yourself into a twist, feel the breath again. Close your eyes and visualize that inhale, the breath moving down your spinal column. And when that creates a little bit more space between each vertebrae on your exhale, 
allow your body to twist a little bit more into that space you created. So it's a soft and gentle twist. We're not using our arms to pull us there. It's all being guided by the prana, by the breath. Beautiful. Bringing your hands, unwinding, bowing to the other side. And then walking yourself back to the front of your mat, coming into high plank pose, inhale. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana or knees to chin. Inhale, Cobra or Upward Facing Dog. Exhale, Downward Facing Dog. Take five breaths in your Downward Facing Dog. I just need to make sure it's still recording. Okay, good. Okay, so you can stay here in your Down Dog or if you want to do a little bit of jumping action, bend the knees on the exhale and then clap your feet together. Oh my goodness, let's try that again. Bend the knees a lot, jump and clap. Three more times. If you move after the exhale, your core will be a little more engaged. The last one, before jumping your feet in between your hands, inhale, halfway lift, exhale. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. Preparing for the other side, hands to heart center, twisting over to your left. Maybe open your arms out wide. And so you can see if your fingertips are on the ground, how lifting that right foot will become a little bit easier because now you have two points of balance versus one. So if you're feeling like it's too far, keep sliding that tricep down the leg. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you come into Flamingo, lifting the right foot, drawing the heel to the sit bone. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you take that top arm and reach for the foot behind you. You can't see it, where is it? It's back there somewhere. Then you take your right hand out to the side as you kick your foot over to the back edge of your mat or side edge of your mat. I don't know how you are at home. For me, it's the back. Mm -hmm. See if you can put more weight into your foot versus your hand, working on finding balance, spreading the shoulder heads. One more breath. Exhale, coming down to a seat. Finding your way there however you can. Okay. So once again, you can keep the right leg extended long if you need to, or bend the knee so the heel is resting against your hip. This time we're gonna lift that right arm up. Inhale, lift, find the length along the side body. Exhale, twist. So I'm used to really wringing myself into it. I'm really having to soften my edges because energetically, when I allow my breath to move me in these spinal twists, I feel more open by the end of it. And then I have less pain to uh, deal with later in the day, right? Okay, let's take a few more breaths here, allowing the inhale to move all the way down your spine. And then the exhale to twist a little bit more. Maybe you gaze over the left shoulder. Exhale, unwinding. Bowing to the other side. Bringing your hands down towards the front of your mat, rooting your left foot, lifting the right leg up into the sky. Yogi's choice, how to find your way back into downward facing dog. Maybe you play with a little handstand jumps. More than jumping, lift the right leg and the left leg floats. It's like that little warrior three. Mm -hmm. Until eventually coming into your vinyasa or straight to down dog. I'm gonna be in down dog. I'll wait for you if you're in your chaturanga. Everyone in down dog as we shift our weight forward into plank and lower all the way down as fast or as slow as you'd like, resting on your belly, reaching your arms down to your sides. We're gonna bend our knees here, reach back for the feet, coming into Dhanurasana, bow pose. And when you're ready, inhale as you lift the shoulder heads off the ground, squeezing your blades together, and then the knees lift, kicking your feet into your hands, what's going on? You know. You okay, sweetie? Oh, Bubba, what are you doing? Hi. 
Oh, he just sneezed in my face. One more breath. Kick your feet a little bit more in your hands. Exhale, release, rest the cheek, let go of the legs. We're gonna do that one more time. Bending the knees as you find your feet once again and inhale, lift for Dhanurasana. And notice what your natural inclination is, whether your knees go wide, together, or halfway. Can you lift the lower ribs off the ground? One more breath. Exhale, release. So we're gonna reach our arms out wide here into a T. So notice we're gonna roll into the left side of our body. A lot of light coming in. Yeah, that's my skylight. It's unavoidable. I can't believe. Sit down, baby. Okay, left hand stays out long. He likes to be in front of the camera. And then roll onto the outer edge of the left side of your body, taking that right foot, placing it behind the left leg. So using your right hand to push into the ground. I'm gonna face you so you can see it. What I'm doing here is I'm not having the arm reach out overhead. I'm reaching to my side, 90 degree angle. Rolling onto my side, right hand can come to the hip or right hand can stay near my face as it pushes into the ground to take a deeper stretch in that shoulder area. So if that doesn't feel very good to you, come back down to your belly, do goalpost arms. So you're bending the elbow. And this is kind of nice too, if you feel like you're locking out in the elbow and you can't really feel it in your shoulder, then bring your hand down halfway and then do the same movement rolling to your side. So you might not be able to go as deep here because now all the movement is being put into that shoulder. You might feel it in the left side body upper back. Going wherever feels more spacious for you. Mm -hmm. Exhale, release. Arms come down to your sides, pause and feel. We're gonna switch sides, either the right arm reaching out long, or bending into goalpost arms. You can do a little bit of both if you want to. Rolling to the outer edge of the right body. The left knee points up. Take your breath wherever it needs to go. If you wanna bend the elbow, make sure to roll back down to your belly slightly before doing that. We'll be here about five more breaths. Exhale, back to the belly, arms down to your sides, rest the cheek, pause and feel. Downward facing dog. Sorry, I had to let my dog go outside. Can you go bathroom? Inhale, send the right leg up high, this time stacking the hips, bending the knee. Feel free to move your dog however you need right now. Maybe you keep your hips stacked, maybe straighten the leg and do some ankle circles or knee or hip circles. You choose. Inhale, de lengthen that right leg. Exhale, bring it through in between your hands. Pivoting the back heel down. Inhale, warrior two. Keeping a nice bend in that front knee. As you flip the front palm up, exhale, reverse the warrior. So notice on your reverse warrior, if you took a little bend out of that knee, re-bend, find your feet. Exhale, elbow to knee, top arm reaching up overhead. Extended angle. Maybe you stay here, or maybe you bring your hand down to the ground or a block on the inside or outside of your foot. If you're working flexibility, go ahead and do that. If you want to do a little bit more strength, imagine that strawberry or berry under your belly. And then take that right arm parallel with the left. 
for three, wherever you are. Find steadiness with your breath and ease, one more breath. Inhale, coming up if you went down lower into your warrior two, straightening the front leg. Exhale, trikonasana, triangle pose. So you can do the same thing here if you wanna do a little bit of core work, lift the left arm and the right arm parallel with each other, or go for the bind, taking the left hand behind you, right arm behind you. It's kind of tricky because it feels a lot deeper in that right leg, a triangle bind. Mm -hmm. One more breath. Exhale, see half moon. Find your way to half moon. We did quarter moon. Now it's time for its big sister, half Ardha Chandrasana. Left leg or left hip steps over the right. Maybe you want to go for the back bend here as well, bending that right knee, reaching back for the left foot. Now, if you're not able to find it, if it's just out there in la la land and you can't move your gaze because you'll fall over, try taking your left knee into your chest and then take that hand down to your knee, slide it up or down, I guess. It's up to the sky, but down your leg until you find your ankle or foot. And then you start to kick the knee behind you, foot into your hand. Right hand can come out a little more diagonal so you can find that back bend. Chapasana. Whew. Maybe you keep pushing the rib cage up. One more breath. Exhale. Release yourself back into warrior two. Slow transition. Exhale, hands come down to the ground. Kick the right leg back up to the sky. Stack the hips. Exhale, bring the right elbow. Or, what is this called? A knee? Yes. Bring your right knee to your wrist. And then pivot the foot. Pigeon pose. Ooh, there we go. So before we go down into our sleepy pigeon, hopefully we all got a nice night of sleep already. We don't need to go to bed yet. Tuck that back foot. Lift whatever you can. Kneecap, maybe front of the thigh. Engage the muscles. And while you're doing that, square the hips. If this feels like too much in the low back, come down a little bit. Walk your hands forward. Keep squeezing that knee up. Find a little bit more lift. Strong legs, yeah. And then exhale, release, untuck. Find your way down into your pigeon pose. <sighs> So if your right hip isn't on the ground, if it feels really lifted, then you can take a block or even a pillow, place it right underneath that right sit bone, and then come down. We want this to feel restful. So if your muscles are holding on super tight and you feel that fear and that shaky quiverness, then you really wanna find support. Use the support, especially if you're home right now, right? Because if you allow yourself to use support, then your body will naturally let go of that fear. And so over time, you'll be able to find deeper levels of flexibility than if you were trying to hold on and be like, I don't need any props, right? My ego says, I don't need props. My ego says, use props. But it's taken a lot of softening of the ego to get there. Okay, walking yourself back up, hands under shoulders, bending that back foot kicking the foot into your tushy. Mm -hmm. Maybe you keep doing that, or maybe you take your right hand in towards the center of that left, or towards the center of your mat, and then reach the left arm open and out. Mm -hmm. Try that one more time, reach, and then bring it back forward. Now we're gonna combine those movements, bending the foot, reaching, maybe we find our foot, at least we can see it this time, unlike the half moon pose. Mm -hmm. Coming into your version of King Pigeon, maybe you stay right here. How beautiful do you feel? Do you feel like a mermaid? If you want to feel more like a mermaid, keep drawing that foot, a deep front quad stretch. And then that hand keeps sliding around the foot until your elbow crease finds its way into your ankle crease. Mm -hmm. Now you're here. If you want to go a little bit deeper, right hand reaches up. If you want to go for the bind, go ahead. I'm feeling pretty nice where I am. I don't want to do a deeper back bend for now. Wherever you are, lift your sternum up. Find steadiness, knees. Last breath. 
exhale, beautiful. Winding your hands down to the ground, tucking the back foot, lifting the right leg up to the sky, stack the hips, do a big hip circle here as you draw the knee towards the left elbow, right elbow, and up again. Let's do that one more time, just a big hip circle. Mm -hmm. Right leg comes down, Adho Mukha Svanasana, other side, inhale, left leg reaches up, stack the hips. Find freedom to move however you want for the next three breaths. Inhale, lengthen the left leg. Exhale, bring it through. Warrior two. We're going to have a short Shavasana, but I trust that if you want to take a longer Shavasana, you can just turn your phone off and lay there as long as you need. Keeping a bend in the front knee, reverse warrior. Finding more space between that left hip and outer armpit. Exhale, extended side angle, elbow to knee, top arm reaching up overhead. So whatever you did on the other side, repeat here, whether the hand went down to the ground, went for the bind, or maybe you did that core work, find your fruit. Maybe it's a big watermelon, <laughs> since we're flying off the ground for three, two, one, finding your way all the way back into your warrior two as you straighten the front leg. Exhale, right hip reaches back, left fingertips reach forward. And so you can't find any more space. Left hand drops down, right arm reaches up. Ooh, I love triangle. Maybe you want to go for the bind again, taking a slight bend in that left knee so you can find your hands underneath the leg. Fold forward over the left leg as you slowly begin to straighten. Trying to take the left rib cage off the leg by twisting it to the right. Mm -hmm. Seeing your half moon pose, unwinding half moon. So if you know you're going to want to go for that chapasana, take your left hand a little bit more diagonal to that left pinky toe. So when you do the back bend, that left hand can support you to go a little deeper, because if it's right in front of it, you're not gonna be able to go too far back, okay? Finding that right foot by either bending the knee and reaching out there for space or taking that right knee into the chest like a little hug, sliding your hand down, finding the foot, and then kicking back. Feel free to walk that left hand out a little deeper as you rotate the hips and heart up. Five breaths here. Keep cooking that foot into your hand. Exhale. Right hand comes down to the ground. Right heel down to the ground behind you as you kick the left leg back up to the sky. Exhale, pigeon pose. Keep that right toes tucked, lift the kneecap. Mm -hmm. So we're almost doing this inner thigh work where the back of the left thigh or hamstring is reaching towards the center of your mat and same thing with the right leg. So we're all squeezing in towards the middle. One more breath. Square those hips. Exhale. Sleepy pigeon. Use your blocks if you need to. Each side is different. Let your head and neck soften. Let your whole body soften. So if you tried king pigeon or mermaid, which is the apex pose on the right side, and it didn't really feel very good to you, then ignore it. You can just stay here for an extra 10 breaths or so. Relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the jaw. Otherwise, find your hands under the shoulders and then give yourself a little slap with the foot. It looks like it's gonna hit you, but we know it can't. All right, left hand draws into center, right arm reaches forward and then back. It's like we're waxing on, waxing off. If you ever saw 
Karate Kid. I'm a child of the 80s, so I definitely saw it. Bending the knee, reaching for the foot. It's beautiful. Maybe you stay here. Maybe you start to keep doing a hamstring curl. So that right leg is super strong as you rotate your hand left to right, like a squeegee kind of thing, doo -doo -doo, until it slides your ankle crease into your elbow crease. And then start to shift the torso forward as you lift the left arm up. Front body, all the way from the hip bones, through the rib bones, through the shoulder bones. Exhale, both hands come down to the ground, coming onto the left hip, right hip draws forward. Let's come all the way down to our back, give ourselves a hug. Happy baby pose. Dropping the left foot down to the ground, right foot crosses over for figure four. If you'd like taking the left knee, hugging it into your chest as your arms reach through. Let me see if I can move through right here. So your arms go through the hole in your leg as you squeeze the left knee into your chest. Coming back to your breath, closing your eyes. Winding down. So you can stay in figure four legs, bring your arms out to goalpost to arms, and then slide your foot over so that figure four foot is now coming down to the ground. So the feet are going, knees are going over to the left. Mm -hmm. If it feels okay, take that right knee, point it a little bit more up, and then gaze over the right fingertips. If this doesn't feel okay in your body, take the right knee, stack it over the left. If you still want something different, you can also do eagle legs. We're trying to feel a supine twist here as we soften the belly, soften the jaw. Okay, knees come back up. Give yourself a hug. This time lift your head and shoulders off the crown. Squeeze really tight. You're a tight seed. Maybe your nose can touch your knees. Your knees can touch your nose. And then exhale, release. Right foot down. The left foot over the knee. Figure four on the other side. So figure four is a nice pose to soften a lot of those movements we were doing. Your psoas can be a little activated when we're doing all those back bends in the king pigeon. And so this helps deregulate that, resettle your nervous system. Also feels really nice on the outer hip. Okay, arms go out wide or go post to arms. Knees fall over to the right. Maybe that left foot comes down to the ground as you take the knee and go for the external rotation. If that doesn't feel okay, find the version that does. Knees come back up, I'm giving yourself one final, final hug. Close your eyes. Then exhale as you find your way into your Shavasana. Maybe you puff the chest up slightly and then re-melt your body back into the ground. And since we're working on pranayama today, our breath for this specific Shavasana, count your breath. A practice of how long you can stay with your breath before your thoughts override. And if you're newer to this type of meditation, one of two things happen. You either count to 100, 
thinking no thoughts made its way in or you count to two and you're like, oh shoot, did I just ask, am I gonna have coffee in a minute or what's for breakfast? A little cold in here. All of these are mine talking to us, describing that here as long as you need. I'll be here for about a minute with you. And I wish you love and light for the rest of your day. 